Greetings, unsettled souls, and welcome to The Correct Views. Sam I.B. reporting for The Media Speaks, and uh, judging by the traffic I get every month, this is what you're waiting for. For those of you that don't know, I've sort of become either the guy with the long hair and the black shirt, or the Fukushima guy. Uh, both of those I wear as badges of honor, by the way. Um, there are people that make life decisions based on what I do every month when I do these Fukushima updates. Um, there's a family moving from Japan due to information and facts that I gave them. So I do not take what I'm about to say into this camera lightly. Everything I'm giving you is the absolute best information I can find regarding what is like the most important the most important problem of our time and in future times, and that is Fukushima. Um, for those of you that are new to the topic, I'll tell you what I am going to do. Um, I'm going to run down in 30 seconds. For those of you that really want the meat and potatoes, trust me, there's tons of it coming. Uh, on uh, March 11th, uh, 2011, a massive tsunami wiped out a nuclear power plant in Japan, and it was actually caused by the earthquake that triggered the tsunami, but that's another story. Um, an earthquake destroyed the reactors. There's four reactors that are a meltdown out of six. Now, for those of you that don't know why radiation matters, why should you listen to the rest of this show from the Fukushima guy? I'll tell you why. I'm going to explain radiation to you this way. <clears throat> There are people that say that radiation, a certain amount of radiation isn't going to hurt you. I'm about to get into some stories here regarding food safety. And uh, when I get to them, remember, they're going to give you levels that they're going to say are safe. And here's the analogy that I'm going to give you so that you know that they're full of it. And I'm going to put a gentleman up here. I'm not going to, I'm just going to have the video on of him speaking. His name is Chris Busby. Christopher Busby. If you want to look him up, if you want to question anything I say, Feel free to get a hold of Mr. Busby. You can find him on Facebook. I've talked to him a couple of times uh, on Facebook. He'll answer your questions. Go ahead. Challenge me. Take my facts to a, a doctor, <clears throat> Mr. Uh, Dr. Busby. I, I encourage you to do so. He'll probably give you much clearer answers on some topics that maybe I'll wake, awaken you to. So uh, actually, I'm going to go ahead and put him up now so that I don't forget. Uh, regular listeners know that if I don't do something as soon as I say I'm going to do it, there's a rubber chance that it will in fact not get done at all. So I'm going to go ahead and put this up. Make sure my volume Video. Is up. The volume is down. <clears throat> I'm going to go ahead and put this up for you. This is Mr. Buzzfeed. He's where I get a lot of my facts from by reading things that he publishes. And here's the analogy I'm going to give you. See this dime? This dime is uh, radiation. People are going to say, oh, well, these levels that you're seeing are perfectly safe. There's nothing wrong with these levels because a certain organization, or maybe the FDA, has deemed that these levels are safe for human consumption. And they'll base it on <clears throat> a chest x-ray. Well, a chest x-ray is administered differently and less frequently than the kinds of radiation that you're getting here. It's like saying if you're sick, you have a cold, <clears throat> you're sick, you have cancer. There's a big difference there. Um, radiation. There's a big difference in kinds of radiation. Here's the, the dime analogy I'm going to use for you uh, new listeners. And for those of you that follow this and follow what I do every month and follow this disaster, steal this idea. Teach people this way. If you take this dime and I throw it at you and it hits you in the chest, in the neck, in the head, even the eye. Nothing's going to happen. Just fling it at you. However, if I take this dime and I beat it down with a hammer until it's a sharp point, and then I throw it and hit you in the open eye, what do you think it's going to do? Well, it's a dime. It's a dime. It doesn't weigh anything, right? Not true. <clears throat> it depends in the form that it's in. And it depends on the way that it is delivered to you. When radionuclides are changed, like the dime being smashed, then some of these are much more deadly than, um, than is common knowledge, than is considered safe limit. So when you hear safe limit, just remember that dime. When I'm reading to you, just remember that dime. Mr. Chris Busby. All right, guys. Fukushima Diary. I have a few stories from them 
Uh, J uh, J Japan's Prime Minister, Abe, to IOC, he said, Contaminated water is completely blocked. TEPCO, tritium can't be blocked. Um, again, I'm going to read some of these. They are from uh, Japan to English. And anytime you go from one language into a receptor language, as Hank Hanegraaff likes to say, <clears throat> the, sometimes it, the sentences don't always flow real well, so if it sounds choppy, it's because it was written in Japanese. In the presentation to IOC, Japanese Prime Minister Abe stated the contaminated water is completely blocked in Fukushima nuclear plant port. In the press conference 9-9-2013, TEPCO spokesman commented they installed a slip fence inside of the port, but it doesn't stop radioactive water tritium. They said tritium moves as seawater. TEPCO also commented that cesium-134 and 137 uh, density can also be decreased by one-fifth to one-twentieth, but can't be completely blocked. TEPCO's statement contradicts the official statement of I IOC of Japanese Prime Minister Abe. It is not verified what Abe was based on. So, you've got the Prime Minister saying that the contaminated water is entirely blocked. But you've got scientists at TEPCO who allowed this meltdown to happen, which is why everyone, please do not support GE. Don't support GE. They did this to us. TEPCO is GE in Japan. It's the same company. Um, they ignored warning signs and allowed this to happen to us. And now, unfortunately, you're listening to the Fukushima guy telling you how bad things are. Um, they can't block tritium. They cannot get the tritium out of the water. And uh, the cesium-134 and 137 um, if you doubt the importance of these findings, and please know that we're going to be uh, having the Olympics there in just a few years. Look what cesium does. Look how long its half-life is. Look at the other elements, like uh, plutonium and uranium, that aren't even mentioned in this particular piece. And that's getting into our food that's coming here, and if you don't believe it's coming here, I've got proof of that coming. Uh, they can't get the tritium and the cesium out. What else can't they get out? And look up what these elements do to the body. Cancer, liver disease, heart disease, brain tumors, thyroid issues. It goes on and on and on and on. How many of you with Crohn's disease? Well, great. I, I, uh, my ex had it. And you know what? Uh, cesium. Cesium. And uh, her mother would have been uh, right in the plume uh, during a lot of uh, the end of the bomb tests. And of course, <clears throat> it changes your DNA. Ask Mr. Kevin Blanche, unfortunately. It changes your DNA and passes it on to kid, to kid, to kid, to kid. Uh, vaccines can also be linked to Crohn's disease, but that's another story. Um, Treating levels at Fukushima surge to new highs. This is from Zero Hedge. More tritium news. As if the developed world did not have enough things to worry about, moments ago, VOA's Steve Herman reported that the radioactive problem in Japan, the country hosting the 2020 Summer Olympics, continues to deteriorate uncontrollably, and citing Gigi JIJI, uh, JI, said that TEPCO revealed tritium levels in the Fukushima groundwater have surged to a new high. Uh, this is from Gigi, it's translated. A Problem radioactive contamination water leaks in large quantities from the storage tank of TEPCO Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant. The 12th from underground water collected on the 11th in observation wells that were dug near the leak location. Radioactive tritium TEPCO uh, triple it was announced today that it has been 97,000 becquerels per liter detection of hydrogen. Uh, that means 97,000 little tiny reactions going off in your body every second. That's what that means. Compared with values when measured groundwater, same location on the 10th, then increased to about 1.5 times, and highest tritium concentration in groundwater was collected in the vicinity leakage after. Uh, Japan did, <coughs> didn't, uh, didn't translate into English very smoothly there, did, did it? Um, what it's saying is TEPCO is finding huge levels of tritium near these tanks. They're, they're, they got radioactive water that will be uh, radioactive literally for millions of years, I'm not exaggerating. And they're storing them in these tanks, and these tanks are leaking. I did a report last week, which is why those of you that tune in for my Fukushima stuff, hit subscribe, because I do Fukushima stuff uh, all throughout the month, too. 97,000 reactions 
per second per liter. That's what 97,000 becquerels is. Um, it says it, uh, this perhaps may explain why a few hours ago an official PR statement was released exonerating Japan of any evil and promising that Fukushima was not a threat to the 2020 Olympics. In order to make money off the Olympics, they are taking data that proves that they are killing people and they are hiding it. They are calling it bunk science. And then they're taking data that they got from scientists who have a vested interest in this, and many times who are part of the nuclear industry, and they're taking their word that everything is perfectly okay for the Olympics. It says the Prime Minister assured the International Olympic Committee that the Fukushima leak was not a threat to Tokyo and took personal responsibility for keeping it safe. Um, well, we know what the thyroid's there. We know what, what the thyroids are showing in uh, this area, so it seems to be a threat to someone. It says it is expected to create 150,000 jobs <clears throat> and have a $30 billion economic impact on Japan. So, of course, that's much more important than uh, warning people to avoid Tokyo. It's much more important to get more money into uh, this, this obviously stable establishment, right? Um, Goebbels, if you don't know who that is, he's the uh, propaganda minister for Hitler. He was the people that uh, told the lies that made the Jews hated, uh, told the lies that made people think that they were winning when they weren't. That was Goebbels. He was uh, excellent, unfortunately, at what he did. Goebbels would be proud. A surely economic professor, Dr. Lippert, odd that he could only stick two titles behind his name. He Doesn't he know that credibility grows exponentially with the number of titles? Uh, that's funny. He will demonstrate to the world just how safe Fukushima is and take a big swig of tritium from the irradiated ground water. Why does this matter to those in the United States? Incoming! Uh, Manichi.jp, M-A-I-N-I-C-H-I, fish caught off Fukushima prefecture to hit the market. Wait, Sam, didn't you say Fukushima isn't that where the radiation is? Yeah. So they're emptying the radiation into the Pacific Ocean off the coast of Fukushima. Yeah. They're going to send fishermen there to catch fish. Yeah. <clears throat> they're going to send that fish to us, and they're going to call it safe. Yeah. So with Fukushima. Fishery products caught off Fukushima Prefecture were ready for trial sale as early as September 26th after Fisheries Cooperative here resumed test fishing the day before. If you are eating seafood now, you are hurting your health and you are hurting your family's health. Stop doing it. Use the thinking part of your brain. Some 5.2 tons of 11 varieties of fish, including which you should not be eating octopus, horsehair crab, black belly rosefish, angler, they were landed at the Matsukawa port in Soma near northern <coughs> Fukushima Prefecture after 21 dragnet fishing boats returned on the afternoon of the 25th. Now, let's look at this paragraph. I'll give you another correct view. It'll just make your stomach turn. After screening the catches for radioactive material, the seafood is to go on trial sale at supermarkets and other retailers as early as September 26th. Now, of course, they tested it, right? They test it for one or two things. They don't test for cesium, 37, 137 and 134, tritium, americum, uranium, plutonium, uh, radioactive iodine, on and on. And they, they find an element that isn't showing up and then say that it's safe because they didn't find any of that element in it. Okay? It's as clear as ever. And again, don't believe it. Ask him if I'm telling the truth. Ask Chris Busby, Lauren Murray, ask Helen Caldercott, ask uh, uh, Kevin Blanche. Go to the Fukushima Diary. See what Iori son would say. You'll find that I'm not lying to you people. The 58-year-old captain of a 19-ton boat that took part in the trial said, I felt good when I went fishing, but I'm concerned whether the catches will find buyers. You know, I'm not worried whether or not I should have moved my ass out of Fukushima. I'm not worried about whether or not I'm poisoning the globe. I'm just worried about whether or not I can continue my greedy livelihood here on this boat and live in a poison water and just deny that it's poison and sell food to everybody and poison them. 
I want consumers to feel safe and secure and eat the products as we will only ship them after screening them strictly. I'm not going to be too hard on the man. He probably doesn't know what I just told you about how they lie. Hey guys, there's not much more to report on that. And there's another couple paragraphs, but it just, you know, goes over it again and again and again. It says that uh, they will embark testing on October 3rd for the first time since the outbreak. And I just told you what they're going to find and how they're going to find it. Don't eat seafood. Don't eat anything that's not at least out of the Atlantic Ocean. And they've been finding traces of it there. I've done that on prior Fuku updates. Um, sometimes private fisheries might be the best way to go. Um, guys, go to TheMediaSpeaks.com and click on BudK. When you click on BudK, you will be helping The Media Speaks because they are an advertiser. And more than that, they have really good things. So don't just click on BudK, but go to The Media Speaks when you do so. Do you know anybody at all that likes hunting? Because it's, it's uh, October 2nd here on my clock. Well, get this. They've got the uh, Black Legion Firefighter Long Axe, $29.99. It looks like it's perfect for firewood, and if you're living in the land of ice and snow like I do, more than likely you might find it useful. They've got the Small Axe with Fire Starter, $39.99. That's by Schrade. Um, guys, I, the 250-yard slingshot. Now, I don't know if I'd spend $49.99 for a slingshot, because I probably couldn't hit the broadside of a barn with one. But if I could, that looks like a quite a dandy weapon there. Friends, do me a favor. Go to TheMediaSpeaks.com, click on Bud K. You're going to get good products. You're going to like everything that you get. They've got knives. They've got uh, zombie survival equipment for those of you into the more fantasy side. They've got everything. They've got some really unusual gifts for the holidays. And not only, like I said, will you be satisfied with everything, but you will very much know that you help the Media Speaks and the correct views. Uh, this is also from Fukushima Diary. Electricity consumption, utilization rate over 90%, only for 11 days from this July to August without nuclear power. Does that mean anything to you? Let me uh, make it clearer. Japan is arguing that they need nuclear power or they won't be able to make it with fossil fuels, correct? You know, they always can't do it. Well... 90% was the highest utilization rate that they've used, in 11, and that was only for 11 days from July to August, during the hottest part of the year, with everybody running AC as high as they could, and sprinklers in the water. You know what? 90% without nuclear. They don't need nuclear. And don't give this BS about man-made global warming. There is no man-made global warming. Uh, search climate gate. Um, we're better off with the toxins from the coal than we are the toxins from the nuclear power plants. Even when they're running correctly, there are routine releases that are perfectly safe. Yeah, there's tritium in it. According to TEPCO, from this July to August, the power utilization rate went from 90% only for 11 days. The nuclear power supply was 0% through the term. The temperature was hotter than average, approximately 2 degrees Celsius in 2013. The end of the rainy season was on 7-6-2013, which was the fourth earliest since 50, 1951. The highest temperature was 37.8 Celsius on 11-2013, which was the second highest since 1969. Even then, the highest utilization rate was 93%. In other words, they do not need nuclear. Even, but Tokyo's big didn't need nuclear. Um, Washington's blog, August 12th. Uh, I, I just couldn't let this one sit, even though it's a bit dated. As I said, I couldn't let it sit. Nuclear Regulatory Commission is using obviously faulty models to pretend that the crumbling nuclear reactors are safe. This is important because there, uh, we have nuclear reactors that were unwisely built anyway, near dams, and for those of you that think that we can't have a nuclear disaster here, like the one we had in Fuku, you're absolutely and totally wrong, because all we need is a dam to break, and uh, the estimation is that there is a 100% likelihood of meltdown. Um, don't believe me? Look that up, too. Uh, for those of you that live uh, near dams and nuclear power plants, uh, damn! Well, they're going to extend these power plants. Even though they were only made to run for 40 years, running them longer opens them up to the possibility of a leak, even if nothing goes wrong. It's safe, right? 
Faulty assumptions by America's financial regulators led to the 2008 crash and many other disastrous results. <clears throat> Similarly, it says, America's main nuclear regulatory, the Nuclear Regulatory Commission, <coughs> joke, made numerous assumptions before Fukushima that turned out to be totally false. For example, the NRC wrongly assumed, one, that the containment vessels in nuclear reactors always maintain their containment. In reality, Fukushima's reactors lost all containment. Uh, by that it means uh, it's supposed to have a, a container vessel that would keep the, uh, ra uh, most of the radiation from uh, escaping. That didn't happen. If radioactive gases leak, they can only leak a maximum of 1% of their radioactive fuel per day. In reality, Fukushima lost 300% per day. In other words, the radioactive gases were leaving the containment vessel every eight hours. How many of you have ever been wrong on anything? Have you ever over or underestimated anything by 300%? They do at TEPCO. Every eight hours, the 300% uh, was leaking out. Well, only 1%. David Lockbaum, director of the Nuclear Safety Project for the Union of Concerned Scientists, who worked as a nuclear engineer for nearly two decades, has written numerous articles and reports on various aspects of nuclear safety and published two books, explained to Washington's blog some major erroneous assumptions that the NRC is making today about American nuclear power plants. The NRC has made flawed assumptions. If you look at the chance of failure for a car, light bulb, or power plant, it's governed by what's called the bathtub curve. Specifically, the chance of failure is high very early on due to material imperfections or assembly errors or the user just doesn't know how to use the new widget. So there's a break-in phase. On the other side of the curve, the failure rate <clears throat> starts increasing again due to wear-out phase, due to aging, rusting, etc. Now keep in mind, if this happens, we have a, a nuclear meltdown that jeopardizes millions of America, Americans, not to mention the food and what it would do to our agriculture and our air that we breathe once the jet stream hits it. The NRC has been using that flat middle portion to justify reducing the frequency of inspections, even knowing that all of the plants are heading towards, if not already in, the wear out phase where the rate of failure starts increasing again. So if you reduce the frequency based on the flat part of the curve, you may not be testing often enough, and things may break before you inspect to replace them. In other words, the NRC is ignoring one of the fundamental laws of engineering science, which is putting us all at risk. Uh, for anybody that's ever done any studying on this, uh, you know what a bathtub curve is. Well, you use the data from the middle and cut out the then it's a lot safer, doesn't it? It makes for a much more even graph. It also makes for a lie. It also makes for uh, putting our lives at risk. Moreover, Launchbaum explained that the erroneous power, that the enormous power of the government has to create incentives in leading to unsafe nuclear plants. I guess it is erroneous. I understand that President Obama announced a nuclear renaissance in the U.S. Answer, this whole year alone, we had four nuclear power reactors shut down due to unfavorable economics. A number of other plants that were proposed were canceled due to costs. Many of the existing reactors have been operated with up to a 20% higher power level than they originally were built or licensed for. Many have already been that way, and there's also a few applicants that have been submitted uh, requests to the NRC to do upgrades at their plant. It goes on. In addition, more than three-quarters of existing reactors have sought and obtained 20-year extensions to their original 40 operating lifetimes, and the others are in the process of doing so. There's now talk of going from 60 to 80 years. Nobody has done that yet, but there's talk of that. The industry success is boosting operating output from existing power plants and extending the life of the plants has been a major factor in preventing new reactors from being deployed because you've pushed off the need for the replacements. So ra uh, rather than spend billions of dollars to build new nuclear power plants, which might be safer but are still an awful idea, they'll just lie and say that the ones we have are safe. 
They'll use the data from manipulating the graph the way I showed you, and then they'll let the nuclear power plants run. And you know, and they're safe. Look at our graph. Would the new reactors be safer in your view? Actually not, and it was actually the federal government that prevented that, even though that was not their intent. Back in 57, the federal government passed what is called the Price-Anderson Act, which provides federal liability insurance for plant and owners and vendors. The government pays for it because nobody will insure them, because if something like TEPCO happens, it's a 100% loss, uh, not to mention uh, liabilities. Because of that, whether you're the safest or the least safe reactor in the world, you pay the same insurance rate. In a more unrestricted marketplace, you have a safer car or a safer feature, your insurance premium is lower. So therefore, a buyer can say, yeah, it costs a little more up front, but I'll pay for it five or ten years down the road. <clears throat> so uh, I'm going to skip that part, but basically, it, it's, you can see the logic there. He goes on to explain more and more of what they're doing. I look it up at Prison Planet. The government is not providing the correct long-term incentives to make smart decisions. Correct. Uh, my impression is that the old reactors in the U.S. are more or less falling apart piece by piece. Uh, there's a quote there for a background link to that. And they are so far past their original projected operating life that issues like corrosion and broken parts are catching up to them. Is that true technically? Answer, it is. Some of the owners are doing the care and upkeep to protect their investment. But some owners, just because they don't have enough money, or they're short-sighted <clears throat> and just looking at the quarter's bottom line, aren't making these improvements. That's where the NRC is supposed to step in and protect the public from new degradation. But they've not shown it particularly aggressive uh, in that regard. In March 2012, a senator asked the NRC whether Fukushima could happen here. NRC responded no. In fact, the NRC study had shown that if certain dams in the U.S. were to fail, there's a 100% chance that three reactors would melt down. Now, I know some of you uh, probably listen to Usher, and if you do, you have no brain. That means, uh, I'll spell it out for you, know, for, you for you idiots. It means that if uh, a dam breaks, there is a guarantee of a meltdown like Fukushima. A guarantee of poisoning you, your family, your kids, everyone, a 100% likelihood. So why don't we shut them down? That's why I'm here, people. That's why I'm here. When the NRC grants 20-year extension to the plant, it doesn't go back to look at the safety problems the plant has, has had before getting grandfathered in. In other words, the NRC sweeps all past safety issues under the rug and irrationally pretends that the plant was in perfect shape when its renewal license was issued through the grandfather process. That false assumption also violates basic engineering principles and says, if, you, if we don't force the NRC to use sound analysis, we might suffer a Fukushima-sized nuclear accident, or worse. And there's a link describing how it could be worse. All right, guys, that is your Fukushima update. Please subscribe. I work very, very hard on these, so hit share. If you're watching this and you don't hit share, you've broken my heart. Um, go to TheMediaSpeaks.com. Look up the work of Kyle, Court, D-Lake, and myself. Share all the articles you see. Let other people know what you've learned. Because it's not going to do you any good to keep this knowledge to yourself. You can warn people and you can save other people from making really, really bad, bad decisions about what to eat. About, uh, well, my computer won't shut down. Uh, really bad decisions about what to eat. Um, you know, tell them, don't eat Pacific uh, seafood. Don't eat any seafood. Avoid octopus. It's poison. Don't eat seaweed. And for those of you that are trying to get your iodine now, it's poison from Japan. Spread this knowledge around. Uh, take your calcium. Uh, stock up on potassium iodine. Don't settle for under 3,000 milligrams of vitamin C a day. This will help a lot of the effects that happen from radiation. It's not a cure-all. Look up bentonite clay. Friends, thank you for listening. L uh, go to the... Charity Connection, donate to Miss Mobley Christ. Uh, good night, friends, and God bless.